Hello and welcome to O Worm. Today we'll be looking at the anatomy of a frog. Our guest for today will be named Kermit after Edith Kermit Carroll Roosevelt, the second wife of U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt. Frogs are amphibians. The word amphibian derives from Greek amphibios, meaning living a double life. Frogs go for the best of both worlds. They live on both land and water. This is important to understanding a lot of the frog's anatomy. For example, the eyes and nose of a frog are on the top of its head, so that it can see even while most of its body is underwater. Also, you can see the eyes of this frog are covered by this film, which is called the nictitating membrane. This is also called the third eyelid, and is drawn across the eye laterally and functions kind of like swim goggles. Here is the tympanic membrane, which vibrates like an eardrum and allows the frog to hear both on land and underwater. Now if I open the frog's mouth, you can see the tongue. The tongue actually flips outwards, like you can see here, and the frog catches its prey with the tongue and pulls it into its mouth, like that. Let me, let me get this out, almost, got it. When the frog swallows, their eyeballs actually sink down to push the food into their throat. That would be like your eyeballs pushing into your head when you swallow. We humans don't vibe with that. Let's get down to the internal anatomy. First, I'm going to peel the skin off one of the legs. I imagine that for Kermit, this is kind of like peeling off a pair of jeans when you get home after a long day. An interesting fact, frogs absorb water through their skin so they don't need to drink. As you can see, this was actually quite hard to do. Here's a clip of the original audio, with the fast forward still applied for an accurate representation of the struggle. You can now see the leg muscles, and holy hell they're big. Frog legs actually take up a quarter of its mass, and for good reason. Frogs do not skip leg day. These muscles are what allow frogs to jump over 20 times their body length. That's like a human jumping 30 meters. For those of you who don't use metric, that's the height of a three-story building. Here's the flexor muscle for this joint, which makes it flex and the extensor muscle, which makes it extend. Here's another joint. There's the flexor muscle, making the joint flex, and the extensor muscle, making the joint extend. Now I'll open up the torso, and to do that, I'll cut to the skin and the muscle right underneath, and cut horizontally around the arm, neck, and stomach. Now I'm going to pin down the flaps. The first thing you see here is the liver. The liver has three lobes, and it's the largest organ in the frog's body. The liver is the ultimate multitasker. It produces bile, stores and releases glucose, detoxifies blood, etc, etc. Below the liver is the gallbladder, which stores the bile that the liver produces. When I move the liver aside, you'll see the heart. Amphibians have a three-chambered heart, which means it has two atria but only one ventricle. The disadvantage of this is that oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood can mix, which reduces the efficiency. In humans and other mammals, the heart has four chambers, 
which allows for complete separation of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Frogs and other amphibians can breathe through both their skin and their lungs. They use their skin to absorb oxygen when underwater, but they can use their lungs when on land. You can see the lungs here and here, on both sides of the heart. Down here is the stomach, which stores and digests food. Nothing more to say about it, it's just a sack. Oh, one interesting fact. Frogs can't draw up like us, so if it eats something poisonous, it just draws up its entire stomach. Just turns that thing inside out like a sock, and then it scrapes it clean with its front feet. Manners, am I right? A bit further down are the frog's kidneys. There's one here, but it's hard to see. Can you see it now? Okay, almost. Okay, I'm going to move to the other side. Oh, this one's much more visible. Good kidney. Anyway, the kidney functions in filtering the blood to produce urine. Here's the small intestine, which functions in absorbing nutrients from the frog's food. Now, if you've ever wondered, your intestines don't just sit wherever they want in your body like a pile of noodles. They actually have scaffolding to keep it in place, as you can see here. This is called the mesentery tissue. You can see the fat bodies along the body cavity of the frog, which is where the fat is stored. Here are the reproductive organs, also called gonads. Down here is the large intestine, where excess water from the food is absorbed and feces is made and stored. It's connected to the small intestine, which is the previous stop on the digestive system before the large intestine. Now I'm going to turn the tray around to get a better look at the spleen. And the spleen here. This makes and stores blood cells and also destroys them if they step out of line. Alright, that's the end of the frog dissection. Thanks for staying lads. Some more fun facts about frogs to send you on your way. Frogs are nocturnal, which means they're more active during the night. Do frogs sleep during the day? Do they just close their eyes and sit very still? Are they sleeping now? Are they hiding? Are they lying in wait? Are they sleeping? Do they sleep during the day? Do they sleep at all? Ever? We don't know. No one knows. Here's some outtakes of me dissecting the stomach because I was curious what was inside. Oh, oh wow, that's the frog's last meal right there. That kinda looks like pulled pork. Do you think it ate pulled pork as its last meal? No, it was probably some unlucky bug. I hope it was a mosquito.